I'm just about to drive over Dartmoor from uh, my studio to Tavistock. I'm going to take some jewellery to a, a new gallery there. Um, it's a gallery that I think I have sold in years ago, but it's, I haven't sold there for a long time. And I talked to the chap and he's keen to have my work. So it's a lovely little place and it's run on sort of really sort of sweet, old fashioned sort of English craft gallery lines, which I really like because it's the thing that I, the kind of gallery I've been supplying for the last 30, 40 years. And they're not a dying breed. They still continue. And it's lovely to find them in little sort of market towns. And Tavistock is a beautiful market town. Bang in the middle of Dartmoor, really. Um, it's a favourite place. Now, I'm driving over and I'm particularly looking at the crowns of the deciduous trees because they're just coming into colourful bud. It, you can see, I mean, for example, the, the startling one is always the willow, which looks as if it's on fire. It's a sort of brilliant yellowy golden orange colour, and it's fantastic because the stems of the willow are the same colour, so it's a massive blazing crown to the top of the trees. And then the bigger, older ones, like the oak and the beech, are a different colour. Ahead of me, I think, can see the, the shapes of the oak tree, which is kind of yellowy, pinky colour. And then beyond that, there are beech trees, which have got kind of pink, purple colour, deep pink, deep purple. And when I was in Totnes a few weeks ago, I noticed that um, the Sea Salt Gallery, when they chucked out all their cardboard for recycling, I keep my eye on recycling, had thrown out some of the advertising posters that had been hung from the ceiling in the shop and they were cut out in the shapes of clouds or hills and they had pathways running through fields and these very stylized winter trees and I thought because they're cardboard and so akin to papier-mâché I thought right I'm going to be able to use those so I asked if I could have them and yes I could and they've been sitting in my studio and I've given them a first kind of, well, I've given one of them a first coat. And now I'm going to think about all these references that I can see of the colours of the crowns of the trees in winter and early spring. So this is the um, cardboard hanging advertising thing from Saltbox. It's a shop, not a gallery. And uh, it's it's really nice, isn't it? And it's got that image on both sides. So when it hangs up, it can swirl around. And I thought, I, there's four of them, two like this and two a little bit larger and slightly different. And I'm really taken with it because it was Dartmoor all over, really, isn't it? You've got the hills, you've got the suggestion of clouds, you've got the pathways going through and trees in winter. Or it could, I thought maybe I could move it through the seasons, actually. I don't know. So that's the first stage one, just very roughly with uh, an acrylic gesso primer and well basically an acrylic gesso primer i did use some couple of greens and um, a sort of soft ultramarine blue a uh, terra vert hue and a uh, probably um a sap green which is one of my favorite greens it sounds very generic doesn't it sap green but it, there is a certain type of green that gets called sap green so that's that stage and I've got to um, find the time to work into this. But I want to collect those references of the crowns, the different colours. That's really where I'm at, the crowns. These are the kind of things I just find take my imagination off in another direction. And then maybe I'll start to think about, well, for example, on the top of this hill ahead of us, there are deciduous trees and there's also pine trees and they will be planted here by probably one of the major corporations that, that do such things on Dartmoor. I, I have a very sort of questioning mind as to the value and validity of these trees for the kind of ecosystem of, of Dartmoor. So that's a reference point, but that's something that I tend to cover in my blog because I'm a great sort of digger and delver and researcher. And I haven't really, I, 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 my mind, I'm always sort of making up my mind. I look on both sides of every argument uh, because I want to be able to understand where the arguments are coming from on for and against everything, really. Um, 
and I find that painting, writing, drawing, photography, filmmaking and craft making give me the space and the time to be able to follow my line of thoughts because it's as much an exciting adventure for me as it is for anybody reading about it because <laughs> I'm not quite sure you know when you when you're a creative person you're constantly redefining discovering developing yourself that's the thing that keeps you going not just the making of the objects or the selling of the objects it's the actual journey that's so real because it's all about you and it's you take it with every step and every breath and it's pretty wonderful really so hey ho here we go